Hello everyone and welcome back to my Folly Wasteland Warfare Settlement Mode playthrough and we are up to episode 8 of the 13 that are in season 4 so I hope you're all caught up before watching today. I guess there is technically spoilers for what we're doing today but once again we are back with the children of Atom and Atom himself. They are raiding a military base that they want access to using the information that they gained last time or sorry the time before that so definitely want to be caught up with what's going on to understand why they're doing this what they're doing and the danger it poses but beyond that i think that about covers it we don't need to do any of the explore stuff because we're not with new hope this time so let's just jump straight into what we're doing quest eight quest name facility tm020 the bandaged man and his children of Adam followers had gained access to a pre-war military facility. Taking full control of it and the unfired nuclear warheads within was crucial to Adam's plan, and that meant dealing with any and all threats in the old base. Only then could preparations begin for the glorious day that revenge would rain down from the sky on Frank and his raiders. Scorched earth was the only way to be sure. And with that out of the way, here's just a reminder of how the Children of Atom are equipped. Because they are fighting robots, and robots are immune to radiation damage, they are not bringing any gamma guns. But we have the Preacher here who is equipped with a 44 revolver, not a kneecap or 44 revolver, just a bog standard one. We have two Disciples here. This one is equipped with a combat rifle, the other one is using a flare gun, the one with his arms behind the ba his back. Then we have three basic... Children of Atom, they're all going to be equipped with bolt action pipe pistols. And then finally we have Atom himself, the bandaged man, who is using a light burning in the darkness and does have special rules for how he acts, what he can do. He regenerates health, he can throw in an extra black die where there would normally be one. He's just generally very dangerous. Although last time he didn't land any hits, or not many hits. He was kind of missing a bit. The radiation was getting to him, I guess. So that's who's coming today. They're actually going to be starting roughly where you can see them. They're starting a bit further in just so that we can get straight to the action this time since it really is just a, a kill everything mission. But I guess we'll cover that properly in a second after this brief word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And with that out of the way, let's cover who they're up against and what they're doing. This represents the kind of just the staging area of the military base they found. Maybe like the, the first floor before they breach the inner facility, which is what they're actually after. So they are lined up thusly right here with the three basic children of Atom, the Preacher, Bandage Man slash Atom, and then the two disciples at the end here. And there isn't that many robots, but keep in mind they're very bad against robots and the robots are very tanky. So over here we have two bog standard protectrons, then we have a utility protectron up there, and then right at the back there we have a Mr. Handy, not a Mr. Gutsy, it is just a Mr. Handy, but he's equipped with his flamer and buzzsaw. And their goal is simply to kill them or die trying. That is it. It's a pretty simple one this time, and with that we can jump into turn one and see how they do, because they didn't do that well against robots last time, in fact they did pretty poorly. Well, RNG just works this way sometimes. I thought the Mr. Handy would kind of be late to the party because he's kind of dangerous with that flamer. He could set a bunch of them alight. But Random Chance said, nope, the Mr. Handy is going first. So I forgot to mention, but all the robots are acting that there's a known threat. They're not oblivious. They're not going to wander around. They're military robots. So they know that there's a threat. So they are moving to attack and to kill. So the Mr. Handy has moved up twice. Uh, the flamer has short range, so he has to get in there. It does mean he's going to have to take a round of fire, but all of them are tanky. No meandering about or getting into position this time. We are straight to violence with the Disciple who's equipped with the flare gun activating. Forgot to leave the red marker there. They actually do move red. They're very quick. Equally as quick as the Mr. Handy, in fact. So he moved up. Not quite point blank, but definitely in short range for that flare gun, which normally rolls green plus blue, but he's taking a black charge or a black die bonus, not charge die bonus, from the preacher because he is within distance black of her, which is her aura radius. And this is on fives. And Mr. Handy's can be set alight, so let's see how he does. And that is unfortunately for him a nine, which comes down by absolutely nothing. And the bottle caps wouldn't have done anything. You have to get a star to set them alight. Oh well. Huh, and we're actually gonna stick down here because the I was going to call it the maintenance protectron. The utility protectron 
randomly selected to activate. He's got perfect line of sight to a known threat, so he's going to fire short range twice with the nail gun, which is on double yellows. I grabbed the wrong dice. There we go. Double yellow. Two damage base and hitting on only threes, but I remember saying that last time and the Protectrons kept landing their hits. Although those were ones the Mechanist had tinkered with, so... Oh, that's a second roll of the game and it's also a nine. Can I get 999? Let's see. If I do, you probably will need to call 999. It is a success. Just a normal success, the cog with the quick action. So that hits, breaks one armor, they don't have armor. They are just tanky, so that is just straight up two damage and with that quick action they don't have any quick actions they can do so nope that's just wasted atom slash the bandaged man activated and zoomed forwards to where you can see him and he's going to shoot at the mr handy using a light burning in the darkness which is two black dice he is using his mutations to give an extra black die he's not getting a benefit from the preacher by the way because he's technically not children of atom they worship him but he is not kind of part of their cult he's just using them so it is three black dice though which means that there is a potential here to do a ridiculous amount of damage i think i can safely put this up here that may give you a good view of it actually it might be a bit too high but hey we'll roll it here anyway <laughs> it's not a crit fail but it is a fail with a quick action what can he do with quick actions he actually doesn't have anything he can do with quick actions either good grief well then that's not a good start one of the two normal Protectrons kicked in, just leaving one more after that, and has wandered down, uh, is getting cover from the corner here, and is just going where the intruders are entering the building. Alright, the other Disciple activated, moved into position red, because they're quicker than your standard Children of Adam, and is also firing at the Mr. Handy, and taking a green die bonus from the Preacher, just because uh, it would be nice if at least one hit landed in turn one. So these are the ones who are supposed to have a good chance to hit. This is on fives. And that is a fail with a quick action again. What we've had two nines, two fails with a quick action, one success, which was a cog. Yeah, that's pretty bad results. They can't do anything. Oh, actually no, sorry, the disciples can. They can do prepares. The disciples and the preacher herself. Yeah, they have prepares. Just the protectrons and for whatever reason, the bandaged man does not. So... The prepare might be useful, so let's bung that on there. Well, the stark reality of it is that Mr. Handy is almost certainly going to set something on fire, or at least buzz saw it next turn. Uh, final activation for the defending robots is the other Protectron, who's just moving up to get into attack range. So that means I now have the three bog standard Children of Atom and the Preacher, who kind of just get their pick of targets. Will one of them land a hit? That's the real question. The last good chance to hit is the Preacher herself. She doesn't benefit from her own buff. She didn't even do a full move. She's just moving with the pack to provide that bonus and also get eyes on that Mr. Handy. And shooting at it on fives. I guess I'll just hold it here. And that is a it hit. Okay. So it did hit. That's two damage. It breaks one armor of the Mr. Handy. So the Mr. Handy has two armor left. And either way, it's a three or a four, no matter which way you cut how cocked it is. So nothing blocked, and that is two damage. Okay, she landed a hit, fantastic. Her, her congregation couldn't, but she could. For the three normal Children of Atom, it's basically going to be similar to last time where I'm just going to go for Hail Mary shots because they have such a low chance to hit anyway uh, on a three. So rather than take a green die to make the hit more likely to land, I'm taking black die bonuses from the Preacher in the hopes that um, if it does get through on the, that low chance, it's really going to sting them because robots have a lot of armor. So once again, I'm just going to have to hold the box. Only one shot for this guy. And that is a crit fail. Good job. Second one moved up. It's going to be the exact same thing again. I forgot to, I think I forgot to mention who's shooting at. He's actually shooting at the Protectron just because the Mr. Handy would have cover uh, from that direction. And the yellowish Mr. Uh, Protectron is in the open. Exact same again, taking a black die bonus from the Preacher. That's a six. It comes down to five. Ooh. Nothing on the black dice. Is there only one blank on this? No, there's two. Okay, not quite as terrible as I thought it was, but pretty close. And the final activation of the first turn, the final Children of Adam. Exact same thing again, exact same bonus. I swear one of these shots will land and it's going to do so much damage. You're going to be unable to contain yourself. It's going to be four damage base. Well, four damage because of the twos on the black dice and the one damage base it does. We're looking at five damage here coming right up. It's a crit. Okay. 
one extra damage, so it's only two damage. Very block bone protectron's armor of a four with no armor break. Yeah, it fully blocked the two damage. Oh, rough. Well, I guess when going against protectrons, maybe armor breaking would be better. <laughs> Lesson learned. Mistaken identity. Resolve an attack on the most recent model to have activated, which is not within orange of cover. Oh, a verbird pauses overhead, even though they must have false information. The incoming gunfire is still very real. On the most recent model to be activated, so that was that final Children of Adam, but they're within orange of cover. So the most recent activated that isn't within orange of cover. Ooh, that would be the second Children of Adam. Yeah, if we just come over here, it would be this one. He's not within orange of that for sure. Orange is like an inch and a half. So what happens? Resolve an attack. Two damage plus a green die. Well, he's got no armor, so it's at least two damage. What else is happening to him? Armor break. Doesn't have armor. So he's just taken two damage from that event card. Good show. As we start turn two, I should point out we don't really want to um, like get behind the Children of Adam that much. Like, don't be rooting for them to do better, even though that first round was pretty appalling. Because if they fail today, which is killing the robots in the five turns, I usually a lot. Um, that means that technically New Hope is getting a, a major victory, which will buy them time. Because if they succeed easily here today, that's bad for everyone going forwards. So. The enemies are going first. It is this Protectron who's quite content on his little corner cover poking out there. So he's going to fire at the closest visible threat, which is this Children of Adam that got damaged by the event card of Mistaken Identity. And he's shooting with that hand laser twice. So where can I put this so you'll actually see it? Hmm. We're going to have to awkwardly pan down here. He is hitting on threes. And that is a hit. It's They don't do anything with quick action, so it's just straight up two more damage against the poor children of Adam and he gets another shot and that time it was a crit for three damage so that's we'll just switch that to a five so that's him up to seven how much does a normal children of Adam have again nine so again they're very tanky but no armor first up in round two is going to be Atom and he is going to fire at the Mr. Handy to try and plink off some more wounds before it gets to torch anybody Again, rolling the exact same as before, potentially super duper good damage. He's just got to get a 5 or under, which apparently is ridiculously difficult to do. If round 1 is any indication. First shot. Hey, he did it! Okay, that's pretty good. That's a 4. And it's doing a total of 5 damage versus the straight up 3 armor of a Mr. Handy. So, he is blocking 1 and taking 4. Where were you last time? So that's him up to six. How much health does a normal Mr. Handy have? Oh, he said he has six. Do they self-destruct? They do not. The Protectrons do, though. So actually, he just... Just like that, he suddenly came out swinging. Good. And that was the first shot, right? So he has another action. Um, he'll spin and do it to the other one. He can see around that corner. He's, he's on the corner, much like the Protectrons. So we'll come over here. And we'll we'll try and just blast this one a little bit with the exact same dice again. Let's see how lucky he gets. Now I'm going to need to move this now, and I'll just have to hold it here. Let's see what he gets. A seven's not good enough. Oh, it came down well. It was going to come down to a six, but that still means it's a miss. So it doesn't matter. That kind of rolled to more damage. That would have been five damage as well. I'll take him being able to remove that Mr. Handy though. That is a, a big get. Uh, Mr. Handy did have the least armor on the table though. Who doesn't like nails to the face? Well, probably this guy, the Disciple, because that is exactly what is going to happen with the Utility Protectron just firing at him twice uh, after watching that Mr. Handy die. So let's pull back, pan down, We've got the dice tray here, and it's on threes with WLs. And that's a nine with two armor break, which don't matter against Children of Adam. And second shot. That is a success. It rolled off the screen, but it is a success with a quick action, which doesn't matter. And armor break doesn't do anything either, so it's just two more damage. Another nail gets lodged in his thigh. That's four on him of his ten health. I think we're going to stick here, and I'm going to go with that disciple next, since he is getting a little bit low on health. And he's going to try and set the utility protector on fire. Ideally, he just wants to land the hits because that will chip away the super armor that utility protectrons get to start with. They start with two super armor, so twice on fives 
Taking a yellow die bonus from the preacher. I've learned my lesson. They need to chip away that armor, like the bog standard armor, I mean. So on fives. Oh, now what do you do about that one? Because it looks like it's almost a crit fail, but it also looks more like it's a success on a cog. If I move this die, it's obviously going to roll onto the crit, or not the crit success, but the success. I think we're going to take it based on almost every other shot they've made this game <laughs> as a team being a miss. Uh, no stars, so it doesn't set it on fire, which unfortunately just means it is one energy damage. Oh, it's energy defense on a Protectron. That was less, but he's still 3 plus 2, so obviously he's going to block it. Yeah, but that chips away a super armor. So he's got one super armor left, and we'll do it again. See if this flare can do anything. Five is good enough for a hit. No, I can't set them on fire, huh? Breaks one armor, so it's energy, so he's down to two plus one super armor. And he fully blocks it, but that's always super armor chipped away, so at least there was something done. Final activation already for the enemies is the other protector on here, and he he tastes, senses, detects blood. There's a chance he can get a kill on this Children of Adam. So hand lasers into him twice on threes that rolled off screen, but it is a seven. Oh, that comes down to a four, but that's still not good enough. Uh, so second shot. Can I move this maybe here, and then we'll just pull back a little bit. There you go. Now you can see the roll. Second shot. That's even worse. So that's a double miss. The Preacher has moved up slightly again just to stick with the Congregation to hand out those buffs and she's going to fire her 44 revolver into the Utility Protectron on 5s and that is a 6. Oh, it comes down to a 5. It, it came down on the yellow die. So it's a hit for 3 damage versus its full bog standard armor now of 4. Yep, 3 damage against 4. Oh, it rolled 10 there but it is a 1. So, 2 damage. That's, that's okay. Not bad. So two damage of it. How much health does it have? It has nine. So it's when it gets half or less, you have to start checking for self-destruct. So if you saw the Children of Atom last time they were up against robots, you'll know that there was a moment where there was just kind of like a barrage of not very effective gunfire from the actual Children of Atom troops who aren't very good at hitting. They're not shooting a great weapon because they can't use their gamma guns and they were very ineffective against robots. Well, they're going to try and do it again because that's the last activations. Actually, no, sorry, there is another Disciple to go still. Um, but we're going to cover this first. This group of three Children of Atom soldiers with their bow action pipe pistols, they're just going to shoot into the Protectron that's in the open. So that's six shots in total. Um, the pipe pistols only have one range, which is range black. They're all going to take a yellow armor break bonus, I've learned. So it's this six times on threes. So not a great chance of any of them hitting really, but we're gonna try it. It wasn't that effective last time. I think I took a green or a black die last time, so this might be better. Well, first one is a miss on an eight. Second one is a miss on a 10 that comes down to a nine. Come on now. Third one. That's a fail with a quick action. It would have been actually really good. Fourth one. That's a crit. Okay, but it's only for two damage with no armor break. So it's two damage versus four. And that would be a three or a two. So regardless, it, it breaks it. Or rather, uh, blocks it. And then what, I've lost count now. I think there's one shot left. At least one. It may have been two. That is a hit. It breaks one armor. So puts him down to three. And one damage. Fully blocked. I don't think, I think there was, that was it. I think that was six, but just on the off chance, it, it would have missed anyway. So, it doesn't matter. So that comes down to the disciple that everybody forgot, who is mostly obscured by this pillar here, but there he is. The one who was prepared and then didn't need to use it because Mr. Handy died. He moved up and he's going to shoot that combat rifle into the utility protectron. So, he's taking a yellow bonus from the preacher. It hasn't helped particularly so far. And that continues to be true because a 9 is absolutely a miss. That would have been a fantastic shot. That would have been 4 damage with 2 armor break. Ugh. And we're already at the end of turn 2. This one is going thick and fast. Let's cut and see. We're doing this one. Super Mutant Broadcast. This is the you're trying to trick them one. Which is one of my favorites. But we've had it quite a lot recently. Despite me randomly drawing these. But there's the text if you want to read it. In our language. A.K.A. Nothing. Turn 3 begins with some nails between friends again as the Utility Protectron is shooting them into his target. He's focusing his target down, 
because that is the wounded one double yell twice on threes and that's a crit oh man so that is three damage in total so we'll just turn one of these twos to five so he's up to five six seven he has three health left and robot robin gets another shot that was almost a crit again look at that it is actually a six but it was almost a crit again so that one missed I want to see some big damage so Atom is going to activate and once again all those dice into the Protectron that's in the open over there and on fives and I have high hopes for his damage this time. It was almost a three, it was almost and then I rolled an eight, it would have been five damage. It's really all or nothing with him, he's, he's very just, it's one way or the other. There's a crit, okay, so that's good. That means that is four damage, no armor break but four damage coming in against a four armor. It is blockable. Wow, wow. He actually just fully blocked it, I don't believe it. Well, time to see if that Protectron that just managed to do the impossible is able to claim a scalp. He's gonna shoot at the Wounded Children of Adam. He needs to do, what, three more damage, two more damage? Two more damage. And he's got himself a kill. And that is a crit, that's two damage. So that's seven, eight, nine, and they have nine, right? Yep, and that is a boom headshot, takes them out. That is one Children of Adam of the three bog standard troopers down, and he gets another shot, so he'll shoot it. Let's see, the bandaged man is in cover, so the next most logical one would be someone in the open, so he'll fire at them. And that is a seven that comes down to a four, which is not quite good enough. The normal Protectrons are proving tough nuts to crack, so let's focus on the utility Protectron since he's at least taken some damage. He has 9 health in total instead of 7 though, but he's lost 2. So I'm going to go with the Disciple with the Combat Rifle taking a extra yellow die from the Preacher's buff. And we're just kind of going to try to pierce that armor on 5s. There you go, okay, that's a hit. It is a total of 3 damage, taking away one of his armor, so it's 3 damage against 3 armor. Ugh, he fully blocked it, man. Oh, that is rough. Who taught these robots how to defend? Second shot. It hits, it's three damage against four armor. Four armor this time. <laughs> oh, oh, no, mm, that's, yep, yeah, okay, no damage. The final Protectron is being a little bit aggressive and just coming out of cover, and he's going to shoot into this Children of Atom right here. Only one shot this turn, but at this rate, with only two more turns left to kill this much health, not looking good for them, but hey. Oh, he got a crit for four damage. Okay, well there's four damage to the poor no armoured children of Adam, leaving them with what, five left? Yep, five health left. Well, let's see if the Preacher is range blue, so she is in range blue, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. She's going to fire that 44 revolver at the utility protectron twice on fives. Come on now, that's a six. Ugh. They're just, they're being completely useless this time. So there's a hit, but with no armor break, so it's two versus four armor. Three armor. No, four armor. He can't, he literally can't get hurt by this. Yep, he blocked, well actually he could roll one. That's how he would get hurt by this. But he blocked all two damage. Fantastic. And you know, it's just down to the Children of Atom, so let's go with the Disciple with the Flare Gun. And try and set him on fire, taking a Yellow Die bonus from the Preacher. That's a crit. No star again, so it's just one energy versus three energy armor. Aha! One damage got through. Didn't set him on fire, but that's a start, and he gets another shot. He's loaded a new flare into the flare gun. What does he get? That's a hit as well. No star again. So one damage versus three armor. Oh, he didn't block it again. Aha! Just take away that one then and change it with a four. So hang on, does that mean he's below half health now? Half health would be four and a half. So I'm going to guess no, you'd have to take one more damage before you start checking. Alright, I'm trying a new tact. We have now just two Children of Adam, but they're going to activate, they're going to shoot at the Protectron that charged forwards. They're both at full health, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to take a black charge die bonus from the pre uh, charge die, a black die bonus from the Preacher this time. I'm going for maximum damage to try and get around their armor that way, since taking the yellow die to try and make the armor break happen or the hit land isn't really working out. So this is just four times with this dice. And that's a seven, so the first one is a miss. Let's go for the second. That is a success. Oh, wow, 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 hang on a second. That's a really good hit. 
it's only one base damage on a bolt action pipe pistol, but still that's three, four, that's five damage versus four armor. That means guaranteed at least one. He blocked one and took four. That is more like it. That unfortunately also means I believe that he's below half health instantly for a bog standard protector on. Let me just check. There's also still two more shots left. I'm not forgetting. Uh, when damage incurred and health below 50%. Yes. Roll the blue die. Oh no. And if it's the nuke initiate self-destruct. Yep, if it's the nuke self-destruct initiated, I'm going to need to go remind myself what happens with that. I believe they just get a free move and then they explode, but I don't remember if it happens out of sequence. So I'm going to double check. That was both shots from the first guy, so this one will still have an activation, assuming they aren't about to explode. So thankfully, thanks to the reference cards in the official app, I didn't need to go scrounging for the self-destruct card because it's right here. So it just means that in its next activation, which will be next turn now, it can only move and then at the end of the activation it explodes. It's 4 damage in range yellow with armor break, extra damage and stun within, within range orange. And you roll a black die and 2 yellow dice, it could potentially do... What's the upper end of that damage? That would be 6, 7, 8. It could do 9 damage if it rolled perfectly. So that's pretty scary, but that does mean you can still kill him before he gets to blow up. So actually, we are just going to shoot with that other one into him. Same dice, I'm going to try and take him out because if he walks into all of them, it's going to be a lot of damage. So let's see if the two shots... Oh, that's a hit, okay. Breaks one armor, it's only two damage now versus three armor. Blocks two. So, hang on, yeah, that was two damage. One more shot. Roll big, roll real big. That's a crit fail. And you blanked out on the black dice again. Okay, so it's probably going to get a chance to explode next turn, which will be quite funny to see. It's a l <laughs> it's going to do so much damage to them. Yeah, I really hope he activates first next round. So this is us going into the penultimate turn. If nothing else, it does mean that Protectron is definitely dying because he's exploding, but there's still one more and the utility one to deal with. Forest Fire. Each model may perform a maximum of one action that is a movement during its next activation. Quick actions are not affected. That shouldn't matter much since they're basically just all going to be shooting each other again. Except for that one Protectron. So he's only allowed one little movement action before he explodes. So that maybe reduces the amount of potential damage he's about to do. But it depends when he activates as well. Start of the penultimate turn and I swear to you, it's random chance. The suiciding self-destructing Protectron was randomly selected. So he moved once into where he could do the most damage within his yellow distance which is right there, that means he's hitting Atom and this Children of Atom within range orange for the extra bonuses and the yellow explosion radius is also hitting the Preacher and this Children of Atom. Now for situations like this, I can't remember if you roll for each target individually, I believe in Wasteland Warfare you don't and I'm getting confused with Crisis Protocol. So we're just rolling the extra dice once, it's already doing set things based on the range they are from the exploding robot, so it's just this is extra stuff on top and it's just one armor break and that doesn't matter because they don't have armor so what does that mean all said and done for this with my helpful reference on my phone here well i think the four in there means it's four base damage i'm gonna have to double check that now because it's not the damage symbol i hate that they use different iconography for certain things that mean the same thing but atom and the children of atom they're definitely stunned and taking at least one damage uh if assuming it is four damage it's four damage to all of them and stun to these two with one each extra damage. This Protectron explodes. You know, just to be dramatic, let's take out some of the scenery as well because it is a massive explosion. He is removed from the table. I'm going to go double check what the number in the aura means. I'm pretty sure it's base damage done by the explosion. And we'll come back and show the wreckage. Yep, it is just the damage done in this initial circle. So the Churn of Atom that was there that had four damage on him, yeah, he's dust now. He got Yamcha to death. Uh, this one over here is taking 4 damage, the Preacher has taken 4 damage, Atom has taken 5. So he's going to be activating next so that his muta uh, mutated regeneration powers kick in at the end of his activation and he heals 2. So he's going to go next, but yeah, that's the fallout of that, pardon the pun, of that robot exploding. So Atom is going, I've already applied the regeneration and he's just going to shoot the other protector and see if we can get a good hit in to make it fall into the threshold of starting to test for self-destruct as well since that'll be their only ticket. That's a hit just. That's four damage versus four armor. They can block it. <laughs> he did. All right, man, very tough robot. Trying again. Second shot. It also hits. It's only three damage against four armor this time. 
he blocks two and takes one. So he does the first bit of damage to the Protectron up here. It's not exactly great, especially with only one turn left after this and less models on the table, but hey, there's a start. Speaking of less models on the table, that might be about to be true because the Utility Protectron is trying to finish off that Disciple with the Flare Gun twice on threes. On an eight, you ain't gonna hit that. Try again, robot. Okay, it was almost a success, but it did bounce back to a nine. Not that it would have done that much. It wouldn't have killed him. But that is a miss. Good. Well, the now wounded preacher decides it's her turn. She puts in some fresh bullets in that 44. She spins the cylinder and she brings it to bear against the utility protector. And rolling the same thing as him, as it happens. And just trying to crack that armor on fives. And that would be a six that comes down to a five, but it's nothing extra. So it's two versus four armor. Okay, blocks one takes one. We can get rid of both those twos, flip one of them to a five. Now that actually means he is below half, so we're going to have to check for self-destruct. Nope, got to be a nuke. And then the other shot is a crit fail. The other protector is charging and is going to shoot into the wounded children of Adam. Just, he's just trying to get a kill count, basically. And he's only getting one shot this turn and he got a crit for one extra damage. So that is three, so we just flip this to five. That is five, six, seven. He has two health left. Though, as a correction, I totally forgot Atom was supposed to be stunned from the um, the explosion. Now, that means he only would have been able to do one action because his first one would have been to shake that stun. He, I think it was his second hit that did the damage on the robot. I don't quite remember, so we're just going to apply the stun now and he'll only get one action in the final round of the game. So it's just down to all my activations now, so we're just going to go down the line of Disciple 1, Disciple 2, Children of Adam at their respective targets. So these two are shooting at the Utility Protectron. She or he, I don't, can't remember which one that is that's surviving, is going to shoot at that Protectron. We're starting with the Disciple with the Combat Rifle, taking a Black Die bonus from the Preacher. We're going for maximum damage to try and get around their armour that way. On five, shooting twice. Eight comes down by nothing, not good enough. Second shot. That is a hit. Breaks one armor, so he's got three armor versus three damage. Takes one. I believe we have to check for self-destruct again. Let me just read the wording. Yep, because damage has been incurred and they're below 50%. Nope. So that is him. So then it's over to the flare gun, which is green, blue, and we'll take... Yeah, well, you know what? We'll take a black die for that as well. Also on fives, we're just going all in. That is a hit and finally set it on fire. Broke one armor and did one extra damage. So that's two energy damage versus now just two energy armor. Didn't block any of it. So hang on a second, that's five, six. That's seven, eight. How much health does it have? Nine. Does it explode? No, but it's on fire. So when it activates, it's gonna take one damage and die anyway. Well, either way, he gets another shot, so let's just see if he can finish the job. Not on an eight. Oh, comes down to a six? Nope, still not good enough. Nope, I was trying to do it in one take, but I totally forgot. We had a third person to fire. Let's do this twice with a black die bonus from the Preacher. That is a swing and a miss, only hitting on threes. Not a great chance. Oh, well, you sure showed me. That's two damage versus two armor. Blocks one, takes one. So we'll just switch that with a, a 2 there. And that's not so bad. That takes us to the end of the penultimate round. So when that utility protector on activates, the fire is going to kill it. So it's a problem dealt with. So they just need to try and get rid of this last protector on. In the final turn, it's actually kind of come down to the wire. Gust of wind. Scatter distance for grenades are, is doubled. AKA for our purposes, since none of them are armed with grenades, nothing. Final turn, final chance for the Children of Atom to clear the place out, and it's this Protectron that was randomly selected to activate. That's why the Utility one isn't off the board yet. Yes, he is dead when he activates, but you still have to check whether he would activate first or not, because it would have meant they get a shot off before this Protectron gets to do anything, which is important in itself, because he's trying to kill, finish off this final Children of Adam down here, hitting twice, and he absolutely could do it without they've been hitting. Not on a f uh, normal fail with a quick action, you're not. Try again. An 8 coming down to a 7 is also not good enough, so that means that it's just basically um, down to the Children of Atom all doing their shots and Atom himself only getting it once, because no matter who I activate next, 
the utility protector one activates and then they just die. So we'll just remove them now and focus on what they need to do, which is can this ragtag group here either do enough damage to trigger self oh no the even self-destruct wouldn't be a way out because he's already activated so they have to do the damage they have to do five damage to it can they do it place your bets now so i think this is just going to be one long unbroken take of a lot of dice rolls to see if we can actually do this or not atom remove the stun he's getting one shot and he's going all in this could finish it by himself if he rolls well enough and 8 is not well enough, so nope, it would have been 4 damage, but nope, so his game is done. Let's go to the Preacher next, firing that 44 revolver twice on 5s. A 6 isn't good enough, and oh, she blanked on both the yellow dice. What about your other shot? Okay, that's more like it, that's 2 damage against 2 armour, after the breaks. Blocks 1, takes 1. That is 3 damage. I guess we could technically count it as like they've won if it does trigger self-destruct because obviously the threat has been dealt with, but not at that threshold yet. So, I don't really need to put these down since this is the final turn, but just to keep track of who's gone and who hasn't. Next would be two flare guns. Can he reach from where he is? Range green. Oh, no. So, he would have to move first, so he's only getting one shot. That's not great. So that is blue green and let's throw in a black die all in all in baby on a five that is a success it's just one damage versus three energy armor yeah three energy armor would have needed to roll four to make anything happen so that's his game done who well, is coming down to combat rifle at long range would be fine so let's fire that twice at long range it is a yellow and a green and we're throwing that black die in all in on fives twice that is a crit with one armor break so that's two damage versus three armor he blocks two unfortunately and then the second and final shot of the combat rifle oh that's more like it okay that's three damage versus three armor <laughs> he fully blocked it it's all down to the children of adam that it failed to kill that's its last chance. Now, what bonus do I take from the Preacher for this? What is the actual best choice? They're getting blank die, yellow die, hitting on threes. Um, I'm going to throw in the green die. I'm playing it safe. Throwing in the green die to try and make these hits actually land. So, first one on a three. It succeeded. Nothing extra, so it's one damage versus four armor, so it literally can't hurt it. Uh, so, I'll roll it anyway. So, block two. And then the final shot, which I don't think on its own can do enough unless it triggers self-destruct. That's a 9, so that's a big miss. It wouldn't have mattered if the green die was there or not. Just out of curiosity, what would the black die have been? Yeah, more damage. So no, they've been unable to successfully finish off at that last predict run. I mean, obviously they will eventually, but it's going to take them time, which means this does count as at least a victory for New Hope in the sense that it's going to take them longer than Atom anticipated to take over the military facility and get what he wants. So slow it down it shall, but it will not stop him. He is going to find what he needs eventually, no matter how many of his crazy cult he needs to throw at this base. But he is still missing one crucial piece of information regardless of what he finds and could potentially use here, because he still doesn't know where Frank is. And we'll be coming back to that particular point later on. That is going to conclude this episode. I sincerely hope you have enjoyed and continue to enjoy the season. Feel free to talk about it in the comments. And please do remember to show your support to help keep this possible. You can become a channel member. If you do, you get to see these a day early. There's also other series that you get to see a week early. Uh, and some other little perks like that. You get a little thing next to your name and, and you know little stuff like that. Whatever I can do, basically. You could also check out the channel sponsor via the affiliate link. If you buy anything for yourself, I get compensated. They do carry this game, as well as other Medivis products. You could also press the thanks button, or anything else you can think of to show support. Thank you very much either way, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in a week for episode 9. Until then, it's time for now.